Today we're going to show you our new 12-foot woods turf bat wing. I think it's called the TB1220. You think it'll compare to a zero turn? We got a pretty challenging mowing time ahead of us. The grass is too tall. I think we're going to learn how well this thing discharges out the rear with heavy grass. We're also going to learn if I have enough tractor to pull it. Let's get started. I could run it this well, but you were able to get real close to our center thing that needs to be redone. And no, no practice either, that was first time. <laughs> well, so. we show everything pretty much on video, so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's not, it's not that bad. It's got a consistent radius. It, so let's just take a quick look at, at this machine, just kind of get an overview. It's three totally separate decks. The outside ones are 48 inch decks. The center one is a 60 inch. So four foot, four foot, and five foot. You add all those up together and you get 12 feet, right? Wrong. You get 13 feet. Well, there's a six inch overlap on each side here. And that allows us to, to not only turn and not have a skip, but also to have just a little bit of flex in the wings and not have a skip. So there's a six inch overlap at, at each deck. This is the, they call it the estate model. Maybe I should just call it the more entry level model. They have kind of two lines. They have one that they say is meant for 40, 50 hours a week, every single week mowing. This one is more intended for a large property homeowner um, or maybe an entry level type commercial thing where you're still mowing only one or two yards a week. Well, what's the difference? The difference is about $5,000, that's what it is. This one has smaller wheels here, smaller gauge wheels. The other one has uh, pneumatic gauge wheels, I believe, and they're, they're larger. Um, they say that the gearboxes are a little tougher in the other one. Just straight up get to pricing right now. They said somewhere around $16,000 entry level on this machine. When I say entry level, I mean there are several options that you can get on it. One example is there's a front roller here, goes here. Now, on each of the three decks, that same kit comes with two rear rollers on the, on the rear corners of each deck. I've got that on the way, so we'll put those on and, and see you know, if it makes a difference. Um, and we'll also kind of let you know if it scalps without it. This is a good opportunity for us to try without the roller kit and then with the roller kit. Another option they've got is chains at the rear. It's a rear discharge deck, so all three of them are. They said that they meet all thrown object requirements as far as regulations without the chains. So it doesn't throw out the back very bad at all. And we can see that here in what we've already mowed. The chains are maybe extra insurance from, from thrown objects. 
The negative of the chains is that it may cause your grass to bunch a little bit more, right? Especially if it's just a little bit wet. Now, in the springtime here, our grass is always wet. Even in the middle of a sunny afternoon like this, uh, the grass is growing so rapidly and there's so much moisture in the soil that the grass just stays wet. It's, it's uh, very interesting actually to me that, that the grass kind of stays a little bit damp all day long. For the folding mechanism, there's three separate cylinders, one on each side and one in the rear. The sides fold upward as you saw, the rear folds upward as well. Uh, there is no dedicated lift mechanism. I'm not certain if the higher end model has the ability to lift without folding or not. I will say with all of these wheels all the way around it, so far that's not been a problem. I've been able to go over my driveway here without any risk of it picking up rocks. It's, it's been fine. I think I'll just take off right through here at an angle, see if I can get it pretty straight, and we'll work from there. Immediately here, we encounter some of the heaviest grass in the yard. If you listen up, you can hear that the 3046R has all it can pull. I slow down just a bit to let it catch up. The grass sure does look nice. Maybe that fertilizer I applied is paying off. With this mower, we can actually turn directly around and go back the other way. Sometimes pull-type mowers don't allow you to turn that short, but you get a good view of it here. I'm leaving a little circle uncut here. I may get braver in the future and see if I can turn that square around. We'll do an initial test around the pond here just to see how it handles that slope. The deck pivots downward and yet still doesn't scalp. I'll try that a little more aggressively later in this episode. Here we are in the front ditch next to the road. I'm going to have to work on this. The water stands in there, and as you can see, it's still muddy. So we have to try to keep the mower deck out of there. That's working fine, but you can see how the larger pneumatic gauge wheels might handle that situation a little bit better. Like I said, this is pretty challenging in one sense for the mower because it's, it's way too high. Uh, you can tell this grass is way too tall. You know, they say to cut only a third even if I'm cutting 50%, that's one thing, but this is much taller than that, and we just couldn't get out here in time. So I think this makes for a really good test for this mower. Actually, probably too much of a test, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of how we do things a lot of times, just push a little bit too far. So let's take a look at, at some of the cut quality aspects here. First thing is this, uh, the, the bunching a little bit of this grass, right? So you see a little of it, but actually, I'm pretty impressed with that. It's spreading that grass pretty well. Um, what, what about in the tire tracks? I think in the tire tracks itself, naturally the mower can't pick all that up, so I do see a little bit of grass in the tire tracks, uh, but not much. I'm really, really pretty impressed. Now, the only place I see grass is where I skipped, right over there. Uh-oh. So yeah, operator error there. But other than that, I'm pretty impressed with this. I can't pull it very fast. Uh, about three and a half miles per hour right now is what I can do it, maybe just a little bit more. Uh, I think if I were to get, if, if the grass weren't so tall, I think we'd be able to go probably four and a half, no problem, but three and a half is all I can do in, in these conditions, and for what I'm doing, that's fine. Now, if I had that zero turn, you'd say you could go 18 miles an hour or whatever. Yeah, you can, but there are advantages to this approach. For me, there's several advantages. Number one, I'm setting probably 10 feet in front of the mower, um, maybe eight feet in front of the mower, but 10 or 12 feet in front of where the mower discharges the grass. On a windy day like this, I just don't enjoy a zero turn blowing it right back in my face. I get it all over me and I just don't enjoy that at all. The other thing is the ride quality. I'm setting here on my air seat 
just enjoying the day. And yeah, I, I may not be quite as fast, and obviously it's not gonna be as well at the trimming, but it's enjoyable. So that's, that's uh, an, another aspect to me. For those of you that have a cab tractor, <laughs> you have the best of every world, right? Uh, I know a lot of people are using uh, 4052, 4066 R's with cabs to pull these 12 foot finished mowers and I think that's a, a great idea. No, you cannot buy another tractor with a cab. Oh, I was trying to be subtle. I didn't think she would notice. Uh, yeah, I noticed. Oh, well, I, she's, she's onto me. Yeah, I am. Okay, we're coming up on one of these gullies on the left-hand side. I want you to watch that left mower deck. Look right there. Those front gauge wheels momentarily dug in and lifted up the back side of the deck. You can see that's a pretty big gully there, but I did have it happen a couple of times going around the pond. Not a big deal, just something I need to watch. I need to make sure that I don't get those gauge wheels in too deep of a hole such that they put too much strain on the rest of the deck. On another topic, some of you are probably already advising how to get rid of the algae from my pond. We treated it with some copper sulfate after this episode. It's getting much better. The slow moving vehicle triangle and 20 mile per hour sign will be pointed straight up when the decks are folded. I suppose it looks kind of odd now, but it's nice not to have it so tall anyway. This will work fine. little bit of practice for me to get my overlap just the right size. This isn't bad here, but I could probably move to the right a couple more inches without a problem. After finishing our yard, I allowed neighbor Chris to use this to mow his yard. He said driving at the proper width to minimize the overlap was the hardest part for him. We still haven't got our drone license, so we won't be able to get a high level view of the striping. But it looks like it does some striping. It leaves a very unique uh, track behind the, behind the mower with those rear wheels like they are.
The deepest inlet ditch to the pond is right in here. Let's take a look at how the mower handles it. Looks great to me. No scalping at all. If you remember late last season, we built this little swale here with the hump beside it. And then we planted these trees in that hump. We didn't get a perfect stand of grass. Actually, it started growing and then died at some point over the winter. Anyway, we haven't had time to get back to it and reseed it. And before you know it, the spring seeding time will be, well, gone. But the interesting part of these clips is mowing around these trees. I'm going to turn pretty short here and turn directly around so you get to see that from a different angle. show you next won't be perfect because I'm not fully used to the width of this particular attachment. But I'm going to introduce you to a technique of how I turn a pull type attachment around an obstacle. The trick is to start turning your tractor well before the attachment gets there. And then just as quickly turn back to your original path. That one wasn't quite perfect. I think I turned a bit too late. This time I'm turning earlier. And yes, I'm slowing down to make sure I don't run over one of my new trees, but the result is essentially perfect. So the simplest terms I can use to explain it is to turn your tractor around the obstacle, pretending that the attachment is right there with your tractor. And then, believe it or not, the attachment follows just as it should. That goes pretty fast. Yeah, it really does. It goes really fast. We kind of had two questions going into this today was how would it how would it distribute the, the grass? I mean, we got so thick of grass here today. Because it kept raining. And I'm very impressed with that. The second question that I wanted to tackle was do we have enough horsepower? And I think the answer is almost, right? I mean, with a hydrostatic transmission, it does fine, right? Don't let Johnny 3 hear that. Yeah, maybe he shouldn't hear that. but. And you're uh, angling for a bigger tractor yet? This one actually works, and it works fine if you're not in a hurry. Um, and I suspect if your grass is reasonable height, this would be perfect, because I didn't have any issues in, in areas where we have a little bit less grass. Now, the broader question we can't answer in one episode. You guys know what that question is? That question is, does this beat a zero turn? There's, there's some obvious differences. I won't be able to trim nearly as well as a zero turn, but I can take double width. So if I'm going slower, taking double width, there's a certain uh, relaxation and enjoyment that I see out of that. Um, you got to drive it a little off camera, Christy. What did you think? I love the mower. The tractor doesn't fit me very well. Yeah, we've talked about that in earlier episodes. Yeah, it's hard for me to get the seat just right where I can reach the foot pedals, but I felt like I would learn to use the mower. You do have to watch because it's you know far out to the side, and but it wasn't that hard. No. All you have to do is turn on the PTO after after it's folded out. Yeah. So it's really not that much more difficult than a belly mower. It's not. Um, and the good point is you're not in the grass clippings. Yes. You set up high. The ride is pleasant. It's so much smoother ride than uh, than anything else we've got. Yes. It's yeah. incredibly windy here. Very. Uh, it was wet just two days ago, but with the wind like this and it's warming up, the farmers are going to be out any day now. Yes, I hope so. By the time you watch this, this will all be planted, I'm certain. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you got questions about this mower, um, you can look it up on the Woods website. You can ask them in the comments. We'd be happy to, to give it a shot. Maybe a Woods representative will even come along and. Uh, and answer the questions. We do thank Woods for uh, providing this mower for us so we can so we can experiment with it. This is our mower now, so we'll have it for the duration until Christy makes me get rid of it because I keep whining about wanting a bigger tractor <laughs> with a cab. You can still keep the mower. <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. 
He shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing, like showers that water the earth. In his days the righteous shall flourish and abundance of peace until the moon is no more. Do you think I was going to say something else? I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> I need a hat. I can't keep my hair out of my face. Yeah, it's, it's, it's windy. It's really windy. Fascinating thing is in not too long of a time we've mowed a lot of this yard. Yes. 